How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. And this is Eli, and you are watching or listening to Commander Cafe. Today, we dive into Oathbreaker. If YouTube's algorithm for Oathbreaker brought you to the channel for the first time, then we welcome you. Today, we will be looking at Kaya, Orzov Usuper? Usuper? Today's deck tech is on Kaya, Orzov Usurper. Yay, I did it, because English is hard. <laughs> she is a legendary planeswalker for one white and black, comes in with three starting loyalty. You can plus one to exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard, gain two life if at least one creature card was exiled this way. Neg 1, exile target non-land permanent with converted man cost 1 or less. Or Neg 5, and Kaya deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and you gain that much life. Hmm, I wonder what your theme is going to be about. Well, I saw the word exile quite a bit, and I've always wanted to build a commander deck built around the exile theme, but I just didn't have enough cards that really cared about exile. And with only 60 cards in Oathbreaker, I thought it would be a good place to kind of focus in on that theme. So, since this is Oathbreaker, what's your signature spell? My signature spell is Swords to Plowshares. White, instant speed, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Um, you can swap this in with Path to Exile. Um, both are... Uh, path is arguably better. Um canceling out life gain just giving them a land but currently my paths are going into my modern deck so I don't have enough of them on hand to fill this role but Swords does a very good substitution so let's move on to the main theme of the deck show us what you got show me what you got um, first is a pet card well not really a pet card of the deck but a card that I've had in my bulk for a long time and never had a right deck to put it in. That is Mesmeric Fiend. One in a black. Nightmare Horror for a 1-1. One, one. When it comes into play, target opponent reveals his or her hand and you choose a non-land card from it. Remove that card from the game. When Mesmeric Field leaves play, return the removed card to its owner's hand. Um, so, the remove from the game is added to Exile and the interesting thing about Kai's Ultimate is it doesn't care if like O-Ring effects, temporary exile. All it cares about is that it is in exile. So if you can get Kaio to ultimate with a card tucked under there, it does count towards it. That's um, a nice card to have. Yes. Next up, we have Tormod's Crypt. Zero mana artifact. Tap sack to exile all cards from target player's graveyard. Again, this is going to be good for both graveyard hate and to get a lot of cards in exile very quick. You'll actually see that this deck... Um, just with, because of Kaya herself is actually very good at combating uh, graveyard type shenanigans. Um, but to go along with that, we also have Crip Incursion. Exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard, and you gain three life for each card exiled this way. So I know I've found that life gain to be more useful in Oathbreaker than in Commander. Um, just the lack of commanders being able to really deal damage, kind of the life gain helps helps you stay around a little longer. Yeah, it's definitely uh, much more helpful in this format than it is in commander. Next up, we have Settle the Score. Settle the Score is two black black sorceries from Dominaria, one of the new cards, and it's exile turret creature, put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. Normally, in most commander decks, this is going to be useless, but this falls into two things that we really care about in Oathbreaker. One, it exiles, and two, especially in this deck, it exiles, and then the other one is it putting two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. So this card, I think, is very underrated in Oathbreaker because you get those free loyalty counters onto your commander, or Oathbreaker. So next up, we have some more removal. Uh, so starting off with Pillar of Light, which is an instant for two and a white, which will exile a target creature with toughness four or greater, so it helps to get rid of your opponent's big blockers, as well as Crush Contraband. For three and a white, 
You can choose one or both at instant speed, exile target artifact or exile target enchantment. Both of them are just handy spot removal for anything that might be getting in your way of your opponent's stuff, and helps your final game plan of, well, blasting him in the face with their exile pile. Yes. Um, last last spot removal we have is Reciprocate. Is a what one white, and it's instant speed, exile target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. Now again, some of these, you may if you have an extra path to, to exile laying around, I would swap one of those out for the, one of these um, target removal. But all of these cards exile, which is something that we care about in this deck, and Kaya cares about it, and then we have a few other cards that care about it. Um, as well later on. Um, but next we will jump into the Wraths. Um, starting off, we have the Orzhov Classic Merciless Evic Eviction. Four white and black, you can choose one. Exile all, all artifacts, exile all creatures, or exile all, all enchantments, or exile all planeswalkers. So again, we're getting a lot of exile value out of this card, and... Um, is a good reset button in any format depending on what you need exiled. I mean, I really just enjoy that card in any deck that can run it. It's uh, really hard to deal with yeah. get, getting that much stuff exiled at once. Especially since it hits Planeswalkers as well in this format is also a very nice plus. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, next off we have a couple uh, fun ones. Urza's Ruinous Blast acts very similar to your signature spell in that it's a legendary sorcery, so it requires a legendary permanent mm -hmm. to be out. But for four and a white, you can exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary, which in this game, there's probably going to be quite a few on the board by the time you're casting it, so that's quite a bit to hit. Mm-hmm. And then we have more of a flavor win than anything else, and that is Ethereal Absolution. Four white and black for an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And creatures your opponents control get neg one, neg one. Then you can also pay two white and black to exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it, were creature card was, if it was a creature card, you create a one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. So getting more cards out of their grave into exile while also giving yourself a mini um, Elish Norn at the same uh, time. Quite a nice uh, synergy as well as just Flavor Win with Kaya being on the card. Yeah. And then one more thing that's kind of a board wipe, but it's also just it's going to save your butt sometime. Settle the Wreckage for two and two white. At instant speed, you can exile all attacking creatures target player controls. That player then searches their library for that many basic lands and puts them onto the battlefield tap and then shuffles their library. So... It's Path to Exile for all attacking creatures. Great way to clear a incoming possible death and also toss a whole lot of stuff that your opponent probably cares about into Exile. Next, we have up a card that cares about Exile, kind of like Kaya does. We have Wasteland Strangler. Two in black for a Eldorazi Processor. Three and two. He has the Void. But when he enters the battlefield, you may put a card an opponent owns from exile into the player's graveyard. If you do, target creature gets neg 3, neg 3 until end of turn. So this can be removal in the right situation. And then if you have Kaya out, you can go ahead and re-exile that card if it's a creature card, especially is nice, because then you're going to gain that life off of her as well. Um, next is an interesting card that another one I've been wanting to try out quite a bit, but just hasn't been good enough in my commander decks. Um, and that is Never to Return. The never half of the card is one black black for a sorcery, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Now the fact that I can hit planeswalkers, again, is very important in this format, and I want, I want a lot of ways to deal with planeswalkers um, in Oathbreaker. The return half is three and a black for a sorcery with aftermath, meaning you can cast it only from your graveyard. And then that exile start card from a graveyard, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. So again, fitting into the exile from grave, creating tokens off of it, getting value off of exiling. Pretty good. Next, we will go into the win cons. This was kind of the afterthought of the deck. Um, 
I knew what I wanted to do. I knew, knew I wanted a lot of exile effects, but I built the deck and then realized, oh, I don't actually have a way to finish the game outside of Kaya's ultimate and kill somebody. So these were five cards that I added in at the last minute as kind of finish off the game options. First up, we have both Exanguinate and Depth to the Deathless. Both basically do the same thing. You're going to drain your opponents for life. Um, putting into X. And Life Gain is kind of... A, there's a small sub-theme of Life Gain in this deck that while playing it, I've easily gotten up to 30-some, 40-some life with this deck because of the Life Gain, which has been really nice. It's really hard to deal with both that and your Planeswalker in the same yeah game um next for our other wing con that was just kind of shoehorned in chancellor of the annex four white 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 is an five six angel and you can reveal this card from your opening hand if you do when each opponent casts his or her first spell of the game counter that spell unless that player pays one it's flying and whenever an opponent casts a spell counter it unless that player pays one Again, with the life gain in this deck, the kind of staxy control that we're doing um, by taking away graveyards and stuff like that, we're playing the long grindy game with this um, deck. So we will probably get to that four white white at some point and be able to really slow our opponents down after that. The fun thing is with that one, you get a bonus little effect at the start of the game. Yeah, so. if you happen to have it in your opening hand, it's kind of nice. Now, lastly, we have two of my pet cards um, in the deck. First one being Imp's Mischief. And as one in a black for an instant to change target of tar- change the target of target spell with a single target. You lose life equal to that spell's converted mana cost. So again, with the life gain in this deck, that loss of life is negligible. And it's kind of like a counter spell in white and black. Yeah. So hits a lot of targets, has a lot of flexibility, which I like. Redirect some removal those aimed at you or your planeswalker or anything that you care about to yep. back at them. Or legit just copy a counter spell to counter or redirect the counter spell to something else, to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so lots of little tricks you can do with that, and it's been a lot of fun. And lastly, is a card that I've gotten and I thought I would be putting in a lot more commander decks, um, but realized that all my commander decks that have black want stuff in their graveyard so it didn't actually fit too well um but that is planar void and is just one black for an enchantment that whenever a card is put into a graveyard remove that card from the game so as soon as their creature or anything dies spell resolves it hits the grave and goes into exile fueling kaya even more um it's kind of a nombo with her plus one but it's going to synergize very well with her negative five yeah, because that's just always going to provide some value while also just shutting down any opponents that want to run graveyard synergies. Yeah, it's kind of like a budget ley line of the void, um, both in that it's cheaper to buy, but also that it's only one black mana. The downside being that it hits you, so it doesn't fit into a lot of decks, but this is the perfect deck for this card. Yeah, can't really go wrong with that. Well, right. if you enjoyed our deck tech on Kaya... Uh, then stick around because we'll have a few more Oathbreaker deck techs here coming up in the next few weeks. Um, Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check us out next time.